Hello everyone, so I am just in the process of upgrading the motors on my Alien. So I thought it would be fun to compare these motors and just newer brushless motor design for mini quads in general to something older. So this is the old King, basically, which is the Cobra 2204, which is really a 2205. But we're going to look at um, the differences that makes this one put out about 200 grams more thrust at the same efficiency in terms of grams per watt as this Cobra. If we look at the magnets, you can see that the air gap in between the magnets and the stator, which is the part that doesn't move, that all the windings are wrapped around, it's, it's like so small, I can't even see where the gap is. All I can see is it's like not rubbing somehow. So that's really impressive. And you can also see that these magnets are rounded if you look closely so that they match the radius of the stator which will increase efficiency and power because air is not very good at transmitting um, the magnetic f field that the windings create so you really want that gap to be super small whereas on the Cobra the gap in between is more visible and you can see that the magnets are actually rectangular and not arced, which further will increase the gap. Okay, so I got these two motors apart, and one of the first differences that you'll notice when taking these apart is that the Cobra here uses an E-clip to keep the bell on, which is the part that spins. But on the E-Max, they actually use a screw that screws into that little shaft and just goes up against the um, inner part of the bearing and keeps it in that way, which I think is a much more elegant solution. If you've ever tried to get off Eclipse before, it's really annoying. So the reason that they can use a screw on the Emacs is because this whole shaft, both the top part and the bottom part, is all milled from a single piece. The reason they do that is so they can have the hollow shaft, which helps to reduce the weight, which is one of the newer things that's going on with motors. As you can see on the Cobra, no hollow shaft. One thing I am noticing here though is that they did narrow it down a lot down at the bottom, even though it is a single piece. And I think that's kind of a missed opportunity because I know on some other motors that it's a little bit wider down at the bottom. Maybe not the full five millimeters I believe as the top of maybe four I think this is only three because it looks to be the same as the Cobra which I think is only three yeah so if you use a larger bottom shaft here you can use larger bearings um, which won't wear out as quick and hopefully should take impacts better the other advantage with hollow shafts, if you're going to go with a wider thing at the bottom but keeping it hollow, is that per weight, something that's hollow versus something that's um, solid, it's going to be stronger just because it's larger, even if it's the same weight. Let's look at the magnets. Like I said, on the Emacs, these are arc magnets. Another thing is that they're using a different magnet technology here. These are N52 magnets, whereas on the Cobra, I think they're either N48 or N50 magnets. And what that means is that for magnet designation, the first letter signifies the type of magnet. So N stands for neodymium, and the numbers that follow rank basically the strength so the higher the number the higher the strength so these are much stronger than these but a problem with that when you start getting up into the higher strength magnets is that they start becoming more unstable under high temperatures and what I mean by that is as the temperature increases you have a risk of demagnetizing the magnets and these will demagnetize at a lower temperature than these magnets but you want to be using higher strength magnets on your motor because they're going to give you more power and more efficiency so on a lot of motors you'll see now and Emacs was kind of known to introduce this in the mainstream with their previous iteration of the red bottoms 
is to have active cooling uh, built into the bell. So if you look, you can see there are these kind of vein looking things just poking out from the center. And those act as like a compressor wheel. So when this is spinning, it's going to basically fling air out from the sides of the bell. And that will pull air all over the magnets and help keep it cool. Whereas on the Cobra, we have these big gaping holes here to help airflow, but there's really no active elements uh, built into the bell trying to combat that build of, of heat because they don't really need it because these magnets are more stable under high temperature because they're not as strong. All right, so lastly, let's take a look at the stators. So uh, one thing that is the same is it looks like they're using the same type of windings here. They're multi-strand windings. And some other things you'll see on newer motors are single strand windings, which I think are supposed to help with handling higher currents. But that hasn't changed as far as these two go, but you will see single strand windings in newer motors. But something that has changed are the laminations of the stators. You wanna have the smallest laminations possible. And what those are is there's basically really really thin layers of metal all laminated together but they're insulated from each other so that um, electricity can't flow in between them now they're not actually hooked up to the wires or anything but they will get kind of a current running through them just because of induction from the magnets passing by and all the electricity going through the coils so if you just had a big hunk of metal in here, that current has a very strong momentum, basically. So by separating it into layers like this, there's not as much momentum, basically. So the more layers you can separate it into, the better, because you don't have all this electrical momentum going on here that's kind of fighting against the coils themselves and what they're trying to do. So here, I don't know if you can see this, but you can at least visibly see the divisions in between the laminations, hopefully. Whereas on the Emacs, they're just so thin that it just looks gray to me. Um, it, they might both look gray to you on the camera, but in real life, this just looks gray to me. Whereas I can see them on the Cobra. So that helps the efficiency of this motor. And that's about it for all the differences in between uh, just older and newer motors and these two specifically in general. So hopefully uh, you guys learned something about really the pretty cool advances in motor technology and just how much thrust we can get these days compared to in the past. Let me know in the comments if you guys like this video and any other ideas you have for me to do. Uh, and please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.